Just a quick note that this video is sponsored by Squarespace, one of the leading platforms for designing and creating online stores and websites. We'll talk more about it later in the video. One Tricks Ah, the good old One Tricks. Riven, Yasuo, Lee Sin, Kha'Zix, Vayne, Katarina, the list goes on and on. Among all of League's champions, every single one has a dedicated player base that no matter how strong or how weak the champion is at any time, they will always play them. Of course, depending on the general popularity of that champion, the size may vary. You might have tens of thousands of Zed mains while there's only like two Yorick plays in existence. So today, I want to go through the concept of One Tricks by talking about a list of topics, as well as answering some questions that I imagine many of you have about them. So let's begin. I think the best place to start would be to first define what a One Trick is. A One Trick, or OTP, is derived from the phrase One Trick Pony, a person or thing with only one special feature, talent, or area of expertise. In League, it's a player who plays one champion, and almost exclusively that champion even in the face of a disadvantageous lane matchup. Whether out of loyalty or necessity, One Tricks are only proficient at that champion and generally perform worse when piloting any other. What's the difference between a person who mains a champion and a person who One Tricks? Easy way to tell is if they have a very disproportionate amount of games on that character and no one else. I'm talking like 95% or more of their games is on one champion. We could use Jared as an example. Anniebot is a well-known high elo streamer who plays literally just Annie. If we look at his current OP.GG page, he has over a thousand ranked games played this season. Comparing his second highest pick, Malzahar, with Annie, we can conclude he's definitely a one-trick. There's no rule of thumb for what is a one-trick and a main, but I would say if the next three or four champions under you have a higher combined total of games than your number one, then it's a main. If it's less, then it's a one-trick. Another way to tell the difference is by asking one question. Assuming the champion isn't banned, would you pick them 100% of the time, regardless of circumstance? If the answer is yes, then there you go. One-tricking is an interesting but controversial phenomenon in the game. I say controversial because many of the community's biggest names like Yasuo, Tyler1, and BoxBox rose to prominence due to their status as a top-level Yasuo, Draven, and Riven one-trick respectively. But there's also a negative connotation to one-tricking by way of it being really easy to stereotype the players based on what champions they play. You've heard it a dozen times, all Yumi mains get carried, all Vladimir one tricks are virgins, all Riven spammers have a bigger ego than a brain, all Lee Sins miss their Q, Rengar mains are toxic, so on and so forth. So it's hard to exactly pinpoint whether or not one tricks are a good or bad thing in League. One thing's for sure though, there's a lot of them. Like I said before, every champion has a group of one tricks, but some are more popular than others. Lee Sin, Riven, Yasuo, Yone, Darius, Kha'Zix, Kane, Zed, Katarina, Fiora, Irelia, Cassidy, Thrush, Seiko, Set. There's honestly too many to mention, but a majority of them happen to fall under the Slayer class, almost like that's the class filled with the most hyper carries. So why are these champions selected the most as one tricks? I have four reasons why. The first is dynamic playstyles. They usually have no shortage of different ways to approach fights and games, making it so you can play countless games back to back without it becoming monotonous. Basically, it's because they're flashy and fun. Even for all my hatred towards Yone, I gotta admit he's one of the most enjoyable champions to play, especially when you're fed. The number of plays and techs you can pull off is almost unfair. Never a dull moment with these guys, and you usually have a great time with them when you're doing well. As for when you do poorly, I don't know. Secondly, they're matchup and composition resistant. Some champions heavily depend on what the other 9 champions in the game are, both theirs and their enemies. For instance, the Marksman class is divided into champions who are stronger and weaker against other class groups. Lucian, Vayne, Samita, and Kai'Sa are short to mid-range AD carries, and they can pump out a lot of DPS which makes them slightly better at taking on Slayers since they actually have a fighting chance. But that means, against heavy POCOMs like Artillery, Marksmen, and Mages, they're gonna struggle. So they'll probably need their own team to have gap closes and lockdowns like Nautilus or Jarvan. Conversely, long-range machine gunners like Twitch and Jinx have plenty of range to open fire on a large number of enemies, and their amazing scaling lets them trample all over fighters and tanks but their immobility and lack of self-defense make them easy targets for slayers, in which case they would likely require enchanters to make up for the absence of peel, like Lulu or Janna. One-trick champions generally don't care about who is on either team. While they do have synergies and counters, they also can just stick to their guns and do their part. Yes, even Yasuo is self-sufficient. Would it be nice to have a Malphite and Alistar on his team? Absolutely. Can he still perform without them? Of course, he has his own knockups. Third, insane carry potential. This goes without saying, almost every popular one trick can carry the hell out of games. Whether they're consistent at it is a moot point. It's if they can carry games. 
The reason you don't see many Amumu, Maokai, or Zillion one-tricks is because they're not carry material. Either they place great dependence on their teammates to do something right for them, or they're too conditional. Lee Sin is a consummate fan favorite because his combination of high mobility, flexibility, and damage in the early to mid game make him take over games really quickly. Fourth, they're meta resilient. This ties in with matchup independence. These champions are either always meta, or can stay relevant thanks to the tools they provide or the job they perform. Renekton's status as a lane bully anti carry makes him very consistent because he can beat out a lot of melee top laners and then transition into the mid game to blow the ADC or mid laner in one shot. By the way, I should clarify that when I say consistent, I mean the champion in theory. I think it's prevailing wisdom by now that one tricks are some of the most coin flippy players in existence, but having said all that, I bet some of you will be wondering what exactly is the benefit to one tricking anyway. I'd say the right way to do that is to break down the pros and cons, so let's start with the pros. The biggest one is the notion of practicing one kick 10,000 times, if you know the Bruce Lee quote. If you spend much of your league career chasing after the meta, you'll end up mediocre on a bunch of champions. This can make things difficult when you're faced with a situation where whatever is meta is picked, banned, or not ideal. Think of it as comfort food. When in doubt, you can never go wrong with playing your main. Even if that champion currently isn't a top tier pick, you know how to play them optimally, which is better than playing a meta champ at an average level. I can't tell you how many games I run into where people think, oh I should pick Fiora because she counters Aatrox, and they get absolutely dumpstered because they have no idea why or how she counters him. They could have very easily played someone they're comfortable with, hypothetically let's say they're a Shen main. In light of how prevalent websites like U.GG, OP.GG, and Champion.GG are along with their tier lists and matchup statistics, so many games are lost because people try to chase random high win rate picks despite having no practice on them. Moving on. One tricks can actually help you develop a better understanding of macro, especially for that role. Constantly jumping from champ to champ implies you're going to spend an inordinate amount of time simply learning how to play each one, giving you less time to actually advance further in whatever role you're playing. It's like having nothing but one night stands. Sure, it sounds fun playing around with a whole bunch of people, but you never develop a meaningful or deeper connection with someone. Garen is a champion with a very one-dimensional kit, so there's not much of a difference in his gameplay from game to game. In order to succeed on him, you have to have a firm grasp on lane matchups, macro, and weak points on other champions. That knowledge can be a good stepping stone for when you eventually, and hopefully, transition to other champions. As for the cons, you run the risk of developing a very myopic and narrow-minded perspective of League. Focusing on one champion is important for helping you become proficient in the short term, but in the long run, it can shackle and prevent you from garnering more experience because you only see League of Legends through the lens of that champion, and that leads to moments where you're trying to play Aatrox or Irelia like you're Riven. Often, the longer you one-trick a champion without at least trying a few new picks here and there, the more difficult it is to break that muscle memory and the more inflexible you become. It depends on what you play, but there are a lot of differences from one champion to another not just down to their individual capabilities, but their role in a teamfight, even within their own subclass. Vladimir and Anivia are both battle mages, but they play vastly differently, so there's a fine balance between specializing in something without being completely locked in. And a lot of one tricks don't know where that balance is. In the words of everyone's favorite uncle, It is important to draw wisdom from many different places. If we take it from only one place, it becomes rigid and stale. Additionally, one tricking has this issue where it can also create a warped or inflated sense of one's own skill, also known as ego. It's pretty common for one tricks to climb very high up in the rankings by virtue of their champion's strengths and the ins and outs of how to apply them. For example, whenever you run into a 70% win rate smurf, they likely do that by spamming one champion, whether that's Kha'Zix or Camille or Aphelios. And in higher ranks like D2, D1, Masters and such, there are so many players that got there by one-tricking, even though their macro and game knowledge are plat 1 level. That's why there's such a toxic culture surrounding one-tricks in League, because they have a tendency to develop superiority complex thanks to all the Reddit montage plays they post, and the fact that they can reach a higher rank through their one-trick than if they were to play with a diverse pool. Now comes the question, is one-tricking a bad thing? No. They're a natural part of any game community. Heck, they're a natural part of human psychology. We are creatures of habit. Even the most spontaneous and ambitious people have routines. Waking up, eating breakfast, brushing your teeth, exercising, jerking off, what have you. It's in our nature to form structure and routines within our lifestyles. People think one-tricks are only in competitive games. Not true. Think Pokemon. 
How many of you who played a Pokemon game a second time or third time have used the same team as you did in the last playthrough? How many of you who created a new Minecraft world went about your progression in the exact same way? How many of you who start a new campaign of Fire Emblem use the exact same units and exact same strategies to win? How many of you choose the same outfits, class and whatnot when you decide to try that old MMORPG you used to play back in the day? There is nothing inherently wrong with one-tricking because we enjoy familiarity. There is a certain comfort knowing the champion you're playing like the back of your hand, and while some of us like to try out new releases like Akshan, it's nice to know that you always have that one that you can count on whenever you're tilted or just want to turn your brain off and play. Of course, it depends heavily on what champion you want trick. Obviously the Rivens, Leesons, Yasuo, Shaco's, Veins are turbo toxic, but Aurelian Soul? A Soul one tricks are some of the most chill dudes you'll ever see and they hard carry almost every game I meet them in. That said, League of Legends is a game that forces you to adapt. Every game is different, there are billions upon billions of possible champion combinations, scenarios are different in every game, and every two weeks or so Riot releases a patch that can completely shake up the metagame. Eventually, you will have to diversify your repertoire in order to stay competitive. After all, there's the ever-looming threat of what happens if your one trick is picked by the enemy team or gets banned. Maybe if you're playing someone like Annie, that will never happen. But if you one trick Lee Sin, the possibility of either of those situations occurring is very much real. So should you or should you not one trick? I would say yeah, you should. It's always good to have a fallback, a champion that you know well in order to teach you the basics of the game. So if you're in bronze, silver, gold, or platinum, then I highly recommend you pick one or maybe two champions and just really lock those two in. If you're in iron, I'm sorry there's nothing that I can do to help you, you may as well just lament your fate and spend the rest of your days down there. But after you reach a certain point, let's say diamond 4 for the sake of argument, you have to start branching out and learn different champions because after that point, mechanics can only take you so far. Some can elevate you a bit further than others, but I wouldn't expect to reach Grandmaster Plus by playing only Teemo. I know earlier in the video I brought up Tyler1, Yasuo, and Boxbox, but all three of them demonstrated competence on a lot of champions, especially T1. I still can't believe this man is determined to get Challenger on all five roles and is actually succeeding at it. For me, my first one trick was Aatrox. I used to play him in the jungle and that got me to about plat 5 back when there were 5 divisions. But then I switched to the top lane and became a Fiora main in season 6 and 7. Afterwards I played mostly Renekton and Darius. And when Pantheon got reworked I one tricked him for a bit. Basically, it's okay to one trick champions especially if they're strong. Elo is Elo regardless of whether you're cheesing wins or doing it earnestly. But if you play one champion and only that for years and years, that's when it starts to hold you back. No one in all of the game's roster is solo viable. You have to be able to play more than just one or two champions. All the same, I think there is a certain admirability to those super diehard one tricks who have thousands of games on Rengar or Thresh. Depending on what angle you look at it, it can be seen as plain obstinance and an unwillingness to try new things. But it can also indicate that they've explored all the limits and possibilities of whoever they play. Even though all websites and stats point to Fizz beating the crap out of Syndra, or Jin losing to Draven, that may be true to the average player, but one tricks may know a thing or two that turns those losing matchups into increasingly winnable ones. If nothing else, you gotta respect the dedication they put in, even more so when they share that knowledge to prospective players looking to give their main a try. Most modern strategies, tech, and information for champions were originally discovered by one tricks and their exhaustive and extensive research. Of course, when you see a Yasuo on your team, you can expect them to be worthless, and on the enemy team, they will almost certainly 1v9 hyper carry. That remains a fact. Before we continue on with the last part of the video, I mentioned Squarespace at the beginning, so let's talk more about it. If you're trying to start a business, blog, online store, or website of any sort, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that lets you easily make a professional and polished first impression. They have some of the best user interface and usability I've seen, and simplify the website making process so you can upload images, videos, add web pages, and even member areas to allow exclusivity. The most convenient thing about Squarespace's web builder, at least for me, is the sheer amount of templates they give you so you can design websites in any way you want, and you can literally customize the layout of each page. Super helpful if you want things to look a certain way. Best part is that they also sell domains, so you don't have to purchase one elsewhere, you can get them all done here. If you're thinking about starting a business, club, an organization, or online presence, I highly recommend Squarespace. They're one of the big names in the website building world, and to help you get started, check out the link on screen or in the description for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. If you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated. Consider subscribing for more content like this. Don't forget to follow me on my socials and join my Discord server. 
Finally, if you haven't yet, check out my previous discussion videos after this one. But for now, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.